The oxalate scare is the newest trend and it's really annoying and screwing with people's heads. Fear mongers and pro meat eaters want you to believe that eating plants leads to kidney stones. More than half a million people go to emergency rooms for kidney stones every year and almost none of them eat spinach and beet greens. They eat hamburgers and soda pop, beer, bread, pizza and donuts. They eat lots of meat, dairy and sugar. Oxalates are highly misunderstood and abused by a lot of fear-mongering people on the internet, including doctors. Remember, in seven years of medical school, doctors get about 45 minutes of nutritional counseling and flawed counseling at that. Just because someone's a doctor does not mean they know anything about nutrition. They say things like, this plant has more oxalates than that plant, therefore we need to avoid this plant. Let's start with exactly what oxalates are. Oxalic acid is formed in your body just like lactic acid, uric acid, hydrochloric acid, and hundreds of other acids that make up who you are, your body. It's also found in plants and animal products and just about everything we consume to some degree. Oxalic acid has strong binding qualities, which means it likes to tightly bond with other elements, especially metals like calcium. Yes, calcium is a metal. You probably didn't know that, did you? And magnesium and things like that. Anyway, when oxalic acid combines with calcium and magnesium, the result in chemical terms is salt. And this oxalic acid in medical salt is called oxalates. Ta-da! That's where the term oxalates comes from. This combination sticks together very solidly and when it's inside your body, it does not fall apart or separate. It's kind of useless to the body. So this useless substance, the body gets rid of it. Like when we go to the bathroom and a properly functioning body has no problem doing so. Um, one common misconception is that because kidney stones are often calcium oxalate stones, that they got it from high oxalate plants. That's usually not the case. Uh, two reasons. One is oxalates and plants are already tightly bound together to minerals and cannot be used and passed through the body. Kidney stones are actually formed in the body when free-floating oxalic acid combines with calcium in the body. Uh, so where does this free-floating oxalic acid come from? Well, this may freak out some of you and this is why many health-conscious people get kidney stones. I've been saying this for years, but people just won't listen. What do health conscious people do? They take lots of vitamin C and calcium pills, right? Thinking they are doing something good because their body needs vitamin C and calcium, right? Well, yeah, they do, but not from supplements. You can't simply swallow synthetic isolates and get the same result as eating stuff from nature. And this is a classic example of that. That cheap vitamin C that you buy in the store is synthetic ascorbic acid, isolate made in a lab by combining sulfuric acid and cornstarch. It is not the same as real vitamin C complex found naturally in plants. You can't just take an isolate and expect the same results. Straight ascorbic acid breaks down in the body into oxalic acid and the minute it does, it starts looking around for calcium to bind with because that's what it likes to do. And here you are taking calcium pills, antacids, lots of dairy, cheese, milk, alkaline water, and there you go, kidney stones. Those of you who watched my calcium and bones video know that calcium isn't just about everything. Everything you eat has calcium in it. Everything. Animal foods, plant foods, bread, pasta, cereal, milk, cheese, soy, fake cheese, real milk, whatever. You know, it's in everything. And when people die, uh, doctors cut open the heart and this thick white goo oozes out. You know what it is? It's calcium. People are so overloaded with excess calcium. It's clogging up their entire body, their arteries, the brain. Everything starts calcifying the joints. Even the eyes get stiffer from cal calcification. Eating lots of meat uh, creates lots of ammonia, which in combination with the calcium literally turns people's kidneys to stone. And they want to blame it on the salads that we ate. <laughs> Let me say this again. Kidney stones are formed in the kidneys. In order for oxalates to form kidney stones, they would have to reach the kidneys through the blood. In other words, there needs to be freely formed oxalic acid in the blood coming in contact with calcium, which then starts to form the crystals. Dietary oxalates are already bound up. Ascorbic acid, on the other hand, can easily get there and it breaks down into oxalic acid, which then when it binds with the, when it gets to the kidneys, it binds with calcium to form the stones. So again, kidney stones are formed, not swallowed from food. 
Okay, sweet potato and green tea are on the high oxalate list. Yet the longest living people in the world, the famous Okinawan Blue Zone, their diet is primarily sweet potatoes and green tea. <laughs> According to the charts out there, high oxalate foods are all Kara and I eat and have been eating for over 30 years. So why don't we have problems? The human body can easily dispose of oxalic acid in even relatively high dietary quantities without trouble because it is poorly absorbed and readily excreted. Did they tell you that uh, calcium oxalate crystals dissolve in hydrochloric acid, otherwise known as stomach acid? Most people don't have proper stomach acid levels though, like I said in my other videos. Bread, for example, soaks it up like a sponge. Alkaline substances like calcium pills, antacids, alkaline water neutralizes stomach acid. Did you know that healthy bodies have a gut bacteria that eats oxalates? It's called Oxalobacter formigenes. Now I said healthy bodies have this. Antibiotics kill probiotics, including Oxalobacter formigenes. You know, it can mess up your digestion for decades. And the few people who do have oxalate issues from plants and juicing, they were all found to have other factors in play, like having a history of antibiotic use or taking lots of vitamin C and calcium pills, eating sugar, bread, wheat, dairy, fruit juice, and other anything else sweet with high amounts of sugar can ruin the gut because it feeds yeast, which overpowers the, uh, the good normal bacteria. Um, but no, it can't be the sugar. It can't be the bread or the antibiotics. Blame the greens because they aren't fun to eat, right? What decreases oxalates? Fiber. Plant foods. Fiber is the main food source for healthy gut probiotics. Meat and animal products have zero fiber. There was no increased risk of stone formation with higher vegetable intake. In fact, greater dietary intake of whole plant foods, fruits, and vegetables were each associated with reduced risk. Sally K. Norton, the famous oxalate danger advocate, even says if the body cells are functioning properly, they can handle oxalates no problem. The guy she mentioned that died from oxalates, he was a diabetic obese alcoholic. They say oxalates uh, take minerals out of your body and make certain ones not available for absorption, leading to nutritional deficiencies. If you took straight oxalic acid, then yeah, maybe, but not plant foods. You're, you're, that's not going to happen. The oxalic acid in plants is already bound with calcium and other metals in the plant, so it can't take anything out of your body because it's already taken something from the ground. It's already used up. It's already full. So there goes the nutritional deficiency myth. The only real issue is, is the body functioning properly so it can get rid of what it doesn't need, like oxalates? It's only an issue if someone's kidneys are already messed up thanks to eating too much animal protein, beer, bread, dairy, and sugar. You know, and they're in the early stages of diabetes, hypoglycemia, gout, rheumatoid arthritis, and stuff like that. They need to be careful of what they eat, but it's not the plants they, they should be worried about as much as the animal protein, the calcium pills, and most of that store-bought vitamin C, straight ascorbic acid, which like I said, breaks down in the body into oxalic acid, Acid, that's one of the biggest causes of oxalates in the body. Herbal vitamin C is completely different because it's just dried whole plants and it has all the vitamin C complex. It's not an ascorbic acid isolate. Big difference. Actual poisoning from ingested oxalic acid is highly unlikely. The only food stuff that contains oxalic acid at high concentrations, high enough to be actual toxicity risk, are the leaves of uh, not the stalks, but the leaves of the rhubarb plant. You'd have to eat an estimated 11 pounds of rhubarb leaves at one sitting to have a lethal dose, although you'd probably get pretty sick even before you got to that point. Another super high oxalate uh, plant is starfruit. Eating four of them could kill an unhealthy person. I ate one or two uh, a while ago, a few years ago, and I felt funny afterwards. Something didn't feel right but your body gives you signals. It gives you signs knowing that you should stop something. I mean, but my body processed it. I was fine the next day and I know I never got kidney stones. A very small percentage of people may have a genetic condition where their body can't process oxalic acid. Um, keep in mind, uh, sometimes stones and gout are not even related to oxalic acid at all. Kidney stones are not just calcium oxalate stones. In fact, many of them are often like uric acid stones, which form in people who eat a lot of meat or drink beer and pound the protein. Um, diabetics, obese people, 
or calcium phosphate stones uh, or cysteine stones, which are the combination of cysteine and sulfur common in people uh, who eat too much meat and salt. And then there's struvite stones, uh, which is magnesium, ammonium, phosphate. Most people that get kidney stones are not plant-eating hippies. Most of them are meat-eating, beer-drinking men or women who love ice cream, cream cheese, bread, bagels, refined flour, coffee, sugar, cheese, pizza, and pasta. And then, then they top it off with calcium and antacids and cheap vitamin C. Most people do not eat spinach or beet greens. They eat hamburgers, soda pop, beer, bread, pizza, and donuts. But everybody's freaked out about the, because of this fear-mongering stuff on the internet, saying spinach and beets and sweet potatoes are killing people. They say oxalates are poison if you eat too much. It's funny, iron is the same way. If you eat too, uh, too much iron, is highly toxic. Meat eaters can get iron poisoning because the heme iron in meat easily leaches out into the body, making it toxic. Iron in plants is not as easily absorbed, which is good because the plant iron is regulated so we only get the right amount that we need, but not too much. But we still get enough iron from plants, so eating a variety of plant foods will not cause anemia. Too much iodine is highly toxic, yet we need a small amount every day. Okay, enough of the plant bashing. What are the biggest causes of reduced kidney capacity? Too much animal protein, starches, grains, are the main things that people in the modern world eat, right? Plant oxalates do not increase oxalates in the kidneys like animal products do. People's diets are so bad, their bodies don't work right, so they take antacids and hormone replacements, which make the oxalates even worse. Here's a study showing plant oxalates do not increase oxalates in kidneys like animal products do. Here's an interesting study that shows people who get stones don't eat more oxalates than those who don't. Here's two more studies. People who eat more fruits and veggies tend to get fewer kidney stones. When researchers removed the fruits and veggies from people's diets, kidney stone formation went up. 40 years of studies have shown meat eaters have much more kidney stones because animal protein is really hard on the kidneys. In essence, turning them to stone. Three of the biggest contributors to kidney stones are animal protein, animal fat, and cholesterol. Don't believe me? Look at bodybuilders and house cats. I mean, lots of meat, lots of milk and protein and kidney failure. Plant protein does not affect the kidneys negatively like animal protein does. Eating animal protein can put a huge load on the kidneys within hours. The acid response to the kidneys after eating meat is called tubular toxicity damage. In fact, plant-based diets have been used for decades to treat kidney disease. As for the myth that plants have these oxalate crystals to protect themselves from being eaten, what kind of defense mechanism is something that makes you go, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that spinach 10 years ago? <laughs> I mean, how does that protect the plant? Calcium oxalate crystals in plants are not there to protect them. They are there for the plant's skeletal structure, to give it rigidity and strength. If they didn't have them, the stem would be like a rubber band and not be able to stiffly support the plant or anything, and the leaves would just hang like wet toilet paper. Now, cactus needles, those are good defense mechanisms. The fear mongers like to show you pictures like this of sharp, scary, needle-like crystals so you imagine these things scratching your insides like razor blades. These type of crystals are called raphides and yeah, they look scary, but normal oxalate crystals look like this. Not very scary, is it? It's not, <laughs> it's not clickbait material. Calcium oxalate stones do not grow into raphides in your body. The super sharp crystals you see pictures of are grown in a lab or found in certain toxic plants. Crystals formed inside the body can be hard and painful, but they're not super razor sharp because the edges are dissolved a bit by all kinds of acids found inside the body. Now there are a few poisonous plants that have sharp needle-like raphides that if eaten can puncture the skin, so a protein digesting enzyme called protease can enter the wound and start digesting skin and tissues. Diefenbachia is one of those plants. It's a house plant that can cause serious damage within seconds if eaten. Yes, that's a defense mechanism. Spinach does not have this. And even with the Diefenbachia example, it's not really the oxalate crystals that are causing the serious damage, it's the skin digesting enzyme that's doing it. The crystals might rough you up a bit, but it's the enzyme that causes the damage. So again, the crystals are not really the main culprit. Did they tell you oxalic acid and its salts like calcium and sodium are a product of normal human metabolism? That's right, your body makes oxalic acid. So if your body's metabolism creates oxalates, why doesn't every person on earth have kidney failure? For the same reason, like uh, you can say a car engine produces poisonous exhaust gases, but it doesn't kill the engine because it's allowed to escape through the tailpipe. 
Now, if you plugged up the tailpipe, now you've got a problem. So some people are healthy and functioning properly and other people aren't and don't have properly functioning bodies. Most people that get kidney stones and joint problems are not spinach eating hippies. They are people who eat hamburgers, pizza, beer, and ice cream. As acids go, oxalic acid is about 3,000 times stronger than acetic acid, which is the main ingredient in vinegar. At high concentrations, it's a dangerous poison, but so is just about anything. I mean, the vinegar you buy in a store is just 5% acetic acid. If you drank straight acetic acid, it could melt your skin and cause serious skin and lung damage. Even water at high concentrations is deadly. It's called drowning. Uh, maybe we shouldn't drink water, right? Or air is highly corrosive because oxygen is an oxidant. It causes everything, including our body, to break down in rust, which is why antioxidants are so popular. So should we stop breathing? Of course not. We should just take things in the right amount and we're fine. Oxalic acid likes to attract metals and carry them out of the body. So technically oxalic acid is like a heavy metal detoxifier. In fact, oxalates show great potential in the metal recovery industry, like the recovery of lithium ion batteries, but that's got nothing to do with health. And since the body produces oxalic acid, the issue is really just if the body can get rid of it properly or not. So are people getting too much oxalic acid when they eat plants? Most of the time, no. It's, it's the same answer as I've been saying over and over. If you are healthy and your body's functioning properly, it's not a problem and it should not be a concern. If you have kidney problems, then maybe because the body is not working right and normal healthy foods cause problems, like I mentioned in my food allergy video, um, cooking food does not degrade or destroy oxalates. That's a myth. They are heat stable, so eating plants raw is not a, uh, it doesn't make it worse. Stop doing things that make you unhealthy. Stop the bread, the sugar, the dairy, the alcohol, the cigarettes, the meat, the cheese, the cream sauces, the bagels, the ice cream, the donuts. Healthy gut flora can easily handle oxalates, but compromised gut health from eating bread and sugar and dairy means no proper gut flora. What's the primary food source for probiotics? Fiber, raw plant fiber. Animal products have zero fiber. And remember, cooking breaks down fiber into simple sugars. We need raw plant fiber. So what decreases oxalates? Plant foods. These studies even show it. Citrates, for example, also help break down oxalates. So eat citrus. No, this does not mean drink a lot of orange juice. I know that's your first, oh good, I get to drink orange juice. That's highly concentrated sugar and too much sugar messes up what? The kidneys. A recent study found that there was no increased risk of stone formation with higher vegetable intake. In fact, greater dietary intake of whole plant foods, fruits, and vegetables were each associated with reduced risk independent of other known risk factors for kidney stones. Oxalates are not a problem with people that eat healthy and have properly functioning kidneys. If they were, Kara and I would have been messed up 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. We've been eating massive amounts of kale for long, most of our lives. By eating healthy, I mean no animal products, no refined flour, stuff like that. If you have kidney issues, read the kidney ebook and get the kidney formula. Stop eating the foods that mess you up in the first place. And I can almost guarantee you they weren't healthy whole plant foods. If you're still worried, then just stay away from spinach, rhubarb, beets, Swiss chard, and kiwis. You know, drink more water, cut down on refined salt, take magnesium, take some citrates, apple cider vinegar, Take my kidney formula and lots of fiber to feed the gut flora. And if you're still worried, then again, avoid the spinach, the chard and the beet greens if it makes you feel better. But the real cause is again, the comfort food that you've been eating and the stupid vitamin C and calcium pills you're taking. There is no shortcut to health. You can't just take a pill and be healthy. You have to eat right. Proper diet and lifestyle is everything. So take the kidney formula, which helps dissolve kidney stones and keep your kidneys happy. I also suggest you read the kidney ebook at marcusebooks.com so you actually learn what to stop doing that causes the problem and what to do about it. So again, to those fear mongers who want you to believe that eating salads will give you kidney stones, look at the millions of people who have kidney problems. They do not eat massive amounts of spinach or beet greens. They eat hamburgers, soda pop, beer, bread, pizza, and donuts. They eat lots of meat, dairy, and sugar. Almost no one eats that much spinach and beet greens except a few hippies here and there. The millions of people with kidney problems do not. They love to blame the healthy stuff they don't really want to eat. But don't be afraid of the healthy whole plant foods. They are your saving grace and ticket to a cleaner, healthy life if you do it right. So do it right. 
Come on, you know an apple's better for you than an apple pie. You know a salad's better for you than a pizza. It's common sense. Don't let people on the internet scare you from stopping doing what you know and everybody knows is good for you. That's it. That's my thing on on uh, on, on, on oxalates. It's, it's just frustrating how... I, I mean, I can't believe I'm alive in a place where they're saying eating plants is not good for you. Anyway, so that's it. So uh, do the right thing. You know what it is. Don't be afraid. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.